thank you so much for being with us at every episode. Today we are going to talk about happiness and material security. Do we need material security to become happier? And how do we become happier? Today, our special guest is Judy Adam. Welcome, Judy. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for being with us. Judy is a self-love coach for women wanting to manifest greater material security and financial independence. Women who are struggling with handling and growing their finances and who are ruled by self-doubt, guilt, and inconsistency. Judy helps them dissolve their blocks to reach security and abundance, own their self-worth, and confidently take charge of building material security and financial independence, and be truly free, authentic, and balanced in life and love. Some of the areas Judy is working on with her clients are meeting financial goals, developing confidence to set up and maintain healthy boundaries, experience time freedom so they can do what they love and have more joy and more connection to life. Thank you so much, Judy, for being with us. Oh, thank you for that introduction. We appreciate that. Thank you. I am really touched and honored to have all of you here because I can see the amount of experience that you are having and the knowledge that you are bringing to this world. And I believe that more and more people need to find out what is your mission and what is your story? And I would like to start right away by asking you the same. What is your mission, Judy? Oh, my mission, uh, very, very simply, is to spread peace and love on the planet. <laughs> and I, from my own journey, I've learned that one really deeply influential way to achieve that is through increasing conscious awareness and empowerment. And so specifically, what I've learned is that for, for women, having material security and going through the personal growth to build that really gives them the freedom to really be themselves and make the choices that they want. And it really moves them more into love, self-love and love for others and out of fear. And so they can show up in their relationships with their families, with their children and in their communities, the way they, the way they want. You know, nothing gives a woman more freedom than having that platform to, to be able to particularly move out of situations and prioritize her own well-being. And that benefits everyone when, when they're able to, to do that. And the, the capacity to do that comes more from the personal growth of embracing her own capacities, skills, truth, and values than the actual money. The money is a reflection of, of that. And it's, um, it's really that identity that she reclaims in the, in the process that is, um, is my drive. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Judy. And I believe that so many women out there need this and need your message and your mission and your teaching. Because I know that we grew up with some limiting beliefs, thinking that, uh, I don't know, we have to take care of the house and the children and we cannot really have financial independence and we cannot really have our own material security, as you mentioned. And mm -hmm. I believe so many of us grew up with these beliefs and we don't even dare to believe that we can have something else. Well, this is um, this is a really interesting idea. When I was um, preparing for this, I was thinking about that and the the sort of financial interdependence, let's say, you know, it was a very traditional model that a lot of us grew up with. And it it worked or didn't work for a lot of a lot of people. And that's had its own domino effects that have seeded into the world. And as things have changed and women have shifted more into sort of personal empowerment and wanting to really expand more of themselves and bring more of themselves into the world, you know, we we see that shift about about awareness and about the, again, the power that comes with, with choice. And, you know, the financial independence can mean a couple of things, you know, you know, it can mean the acquiring assets to generate income that can give you a lifestyle that you want without eating into the capital, that's one. And another one is moving out of financial dependence, potentially on family or a partner. And that can really, you know, sort of tie us into conditioning and situations that can, can be very difficult and really perpetuate all those limiting beliefs and, and difficult experiences. So it's great to, to be able to shift 
and spread that message about having more um, financial independence to, you know, potentially um, ripple out more, um, yeah, more empowerment and out of the limiting the beliefs, like, because that is really a way to raise all boots. Yeah. Absolutely. Amazing, Judy. Thank you so much. And uh, whilst you were uh, talking about uh, this subject, I um, just uh, thought about uh, one idea or one uh, thought that I had was that um, I would say that we have kind of three categories of women, if I can speak like that, is uh, there are those women who know uh, that they are um, financially independent, they are kind of a boss or a manager, they mm -hmm. move on in their uh, hierarchy or in their jobs. Then there are those who don't believe they can do that and they stay home and take care of the house and the children. Mm. And then there will be those who find a sort of balance between their personal life and mm. still having a career or being in the business. Mm. What do you think about this? Is uh, this, this something that we can all achieve? Have this balance all the time in our life? Have a career or maybe a business and at the same time have a family and grow up our children? Oh gosh, that is uh, that is quite a question. I think women have been trying to reconcile that one for decades. <laughs> um, so I personally haven't had children. That's not a a, um, a life experience that, that I've had, and I, I look on women who who undergo that with with awe. And and also, I keep on coming back to um, to values and priorities when when I do that, and um, you know, reflecting on this, um, in that the you know, there can be so many different situations where, you know, when uh, when a lady is um, going through child rearing and potentially there um, is a, um, a situation with reliance on a partner, that model has existed for a very long time and that has worked for, for many for many women. And also sometimes when there's an internal drive to express capacities, skills, abilities, and, and women want to, to really express that, potentially for the goal of having their own security, that that really creates that sort of middle ground for, for growth for them to, to go through that process of, um, of finding the balance in, you know, their, the choices and the priorities and, and the values. And certainly with the coaching that I do, that is an area I'm, I'd be looking to support women, women through. I mean, that can be very, very rich in, in personal growth. And sometimes that growth process can look at the areas of you know where we need to evolve things and let them go and, and that can be very challenging sometimes and also sometimes the choices in that area can really allow a woman to come more into balance with herself and then show up you know in a in a freer way you know in her work build her security with her with, with her family with her partner with her with her children um that can be can very can be very valuable and in the stages of getting there that can be i think potentially quite um quite challenging and quite messy and and and, and quite prickly as as people walk that path um and as i said i i haven't i haven't walked that path um myself and also in observing women who who have walked that and learning from their experiences i think the the core path of moving out of fear and into love for self and around others can create that space for women to really make the choices and get clear about what they really want and then give themselves permission to to do that um, and and find that balance thank you so much judy amazing thank you so much for uh, for helping us understand what to do and for teaching us purpose. <laughs> that's just my perspective <laughs> what i would like to to ask you is uh, for those women who uh, haven't chosen to be in a career or who didn't follow this path of financial independence mm -hmm. and also having money for themselves maybe they depend on their husband their family mm -hmm. do you think they can still find a way to self-love and self-acceptance without that material security they would like to have Oh, ab absolutely. I think one of the, the most beautiful things about, about self-love is that it, in some ways, I think it's the cure for everything. Um, you know, for all of the, the choices that you made in life, you know, the, the results you have around you, the, the consequences and the path that you have, that you have taken, you know, absolutely. And I think in, in some ways, you know, where there is that situation of um, potentially financial dependence on a partner, the, the self-love is beneficial to all in that it will, it can ease relationships and um, support, you know, those arrangements to to grow into the future, you know, by um, 
by seeding into relationship with a with a partner. Um, so whichever whichever way you go, I think you know self love is the is the key. Um, and having said that. You know, once a decision has been made, you know, it's not one and done. There's always the possibility as time plays out to make make different choices for the future. And sometimes when women, I think, move from one phase of life into another, you know, more choices become become available. And sometimes you know, what I observe is when there's that uh, empty nest um, phenomenon and, you know, the children grow up, you know, a lot of times at, at that point, you know, some women will decide that that now it's it's time to to spread their wings and and do something new and that may not be about acquiring financial independence per se it might be about again expressing more of themselves and and finding new new passions and allowing their lives to um to morph and change and expand and grow in a different way yeah amazing thank you so much judy thank you uh, I am really inspired and I know that I have always been on the side of having career, always being financially independent. I never imagined it um, otherwise. And I know that even when I will have a family, my aim is to have this balance. But uh, the um, question would be, and I know that it can be a difficult question for you. Mm-hmm. How can women find the material security? What are some of the solutions that you could give us right away on the spot, if you have anything in mind, that could help those who are listening to us to take the first steps towards this material security. Uh, I, you know, the first one I think comes down to the um, the income generation and uh, work life, and um, where that has been an area of of challenge. Really looking at the the personal growth around personal power and value is a key way to really grow that grow that area so for example growing income um can be very much about personal growth investment in the self is a way to expand that whether it's you know upskilling for your profession um you know increasing your knowledge base um so that's that's really one key area is the the work and income side and apart from that about really expanding your foundation you know some of the the really building blocks uh, for that would be establishing your emergency fund. Um, it would be also planning for um, for your future. So you may want to have the choice for work to become optional one day to be able to have retirement. So looking at um, starting to develop investments because you know, as we learn, it's difficult to save your way into retirement. You know, investment is really a, a key way to um to go down that route, that that route. And um, and then uh, in addition to that, um, really starting to consolidate your base for your home and transport, things like that. It's it's one really simple area. Uh, you know, for example, you will feel more secure when you look after your car, you know, for example. You know, it, it's really simple things like that where you're looking after yourself and treating yourself well and looking after the things where you put yourself. You put yourself in your car every day. You put, you put your physical security in that every day. So making sure that your car is looked after, it's roadworthy. You know, that's a, a really simple but crucial area to really build your your security because the security is about how you treat yourself and how you look after yourself money is one is one aspect of that you know also making sure that your your home is looked after you know your, your plugs are well are well taken care of it, making sure that you're maintaining your your situation you know those are some of the key areas i would i would um, suggest looking at Amazing. Thank you so much, Judy. Thank you very much for uh, for helping us and for uh, giving us uh, such valuable information. And this uh, made me think about those women and even also men who would like to uh, start their own business, who would like to transition from a career to becoming a business owner, mm. but they don't dare doing it because of this financial security, because of the safety net of their job. And I am saying this also based on my own experience because I did this transition and I know that we can have many limiting beliefs or fears or doubts Mm -hmm. that are coming in because we don't know what will happen. We -hmm. don't know if this is going to work or not. Mm -hmm. What would you advise those women who are in this situation? Oh, that's such a great question. I, I love that. And when I've been reflecting on, on that, um, what has really brought me down to is that, Placing your faith outside of yourself in money is one way to go about things. And, and really the external can change in an instant. And it's in some ways, it's it's much safer to place your faith in yourself. And one of the ways to really support yourself to do that is to 
get really clear about what is true for you, what your values are, and then also do a really good appraisal of what your knowledge is, what your skills are, what your abilities are, and what you really want. And then place your focus and attention and faith in yourself and, and all of that. Um, so that you know that you can navigate whatever change is ahead of you. Because, you know, let's let's face it, you know, some time ago there was a banking crisis. Things like that can fail, the external can fail, you know, at any point. And when you place your faith out, outside of yourself in, you know, some external human-based structure, then that, that is a bet that you make. I believe that it's a safer bet to, to bet on yourself. And then appreciate yourself and then invest in yourself. That, that's what I would, I would say. And when you're looking to, to build a business, I think a great place to start is looking at the, the mountain of knowledge you already have. I think that's a great place to start. Thank you so much, Judy. Indeed, I absolutely agree with you. And you mentioned something that um, reminded me of, uh, of my own experience and my own path. You mentioned investing in yourself. Mm. For those who are listening to us, what does it mean? How do you see it? So particularly, my path has been very much about personal empowerment through increasing awareness. Increasing consciousness has been enormously, deeply foundational in value for, for me. And along the way, I've been investing in myself to move from more challenging areas to, to where I am now. And I think that that investment in self, in increasing personal power through really accessing the power which already exists internally and really increasing your access to that through consciousness is hugely beneficial. And so what I would say now is that I wouldn't trade what I know now for anything. <laughs> I I couldn't put up I couldn't put a price on it. So for, for people who are looking to, to invest in themselves, it can take more tangible forms like knowledge and skills and so on. And also those, those are great and those translate practically into the external world. And really the, in order for those to even become open to you, the awareness and the consciousness is the, is the key to, to even see that that is an area you need to, to develop. So increasing consciousness personally, you know, on your own is, is so rewarding. It's so valuable. And also it can be a, a, a process that, that goes on for the lifetime. Sure. And also it can be a very slow day by day process. That's, that's what mine has, has been. And also what I've learned over time is that working with a coach can really speed up that process. Um, you know, very much, it's always going to work at the rate that is right for you. You're going to realize what you need, you know, when the time is right for you and when you're, when your being is ready to incorporate that. Um, so certainly investing in self, I, I've come to learn that coaching is a very, very valuable component to, to that, that can then provide the springboard to help you identify you know, where your truth is so that you can then go forward along the, the avenues that are already going to be for your best and highest good. Absolutely. I fully agree with you. And uh, I remember that when I started my business, I thought that I don't need a coach because I am very motivated. I am very committed to my goals. I can do whatever I am I'm putting my mind into. And then slowly, slowly, I realized that the more I grow and the more I encounter challenges and obstacles mm -hmm. and uh, all these limiting beliefs that are coming in my head. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I need someone who is supporting me. And right now I have so many people supporting me, coaches also so on, in all the areas, health, mm -hmm. also emotional, but also spiritual, because mm -hmm. we need people who are there for us to take it out from us. Because when we are too fixated mm -hmm. on certain things, like we are on a business or whatever we are doing in our life, we forget or we don't realize what is happening really inside ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the coach is there to support you and to take it out, to put it uh, in front of you so that you can see it. Uh, exactly. I think oftentimes, you know, the whatever obstacle we're facing is really related to a blind spot in our awareness. And you can certainly eventually find your way on your own. Absolutely. And also a coach can really support, you know, helping show up that mirror and help you find that blind spot. So you can then untangle it and then carry on on your way, your way forward. Oh, I absolutely agree with you there. Absolutely, Judy. I yeah. would like to ask you before we close today, how can people contact you and who are you serving? Ah, oh, thank you. Um, so uh, 
I have a, an email address um, that uh, I can provide here for you, which is um, judy.adam at phoenixsolutions.uk. Uh, I'm also on Facebook on Judy Adam, and my website is currently under construction. Um, and my contact details should be available uh, here as well um, in, the, in the podcast. And who am I serving? Uh, my, my passion is to support women you know, really at, at any age, and I, I think I probably have the most to, to support for women who are in that stage of life, you know, probably between about about 30 to 30 to 50, um, where I can support through my own um, my own growth and, and, and serving them. And so it's really, you know, women who are looking to to grow towards healthy, um, healthy independence and financial independence is a is a key part of that. Um, and so women who are looking to become more balanced in life and love and really building their material security as a foundation for that, it would be my honor to, to serve you. Thank you so much, Judy. For those of us, for those of you listening to Judy and listening to our interview, contact Judy if you want more financial freedom or more financial independence or material security. If you want more balance in your life and more self-love, she can help you and support you to achieve those goals you are dreaming about so that you can live the lifestyle you desire. Thank you so much, Judy, for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for those of you listening to us, stay connected. More is to follow in our next episodes.